we've all been there before. Sometimes when it comes to cleaning out your pond filter, it's one of those jobs that gets put right to the back of the list. Because let's face it, it isn't one of the most enjoyable jobs to do. It doesn't actually have to be a difficult task. You stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna go through everything and we'll show you how to make your life a lot easier. Also, what we want to cover in this video is that when you actually clean out a pond filter, it isn't always the best idea. Now, it might sound a little bit weird to say, um, but yes, just work with me. I'll go through everything and show you exactly what we mean by that. Not just that, we're also gonna show you what a filter actually does and how it works. And not just to keep the water clear, but we're gonna show you exactly what a filter is actually meant to do to keep the water healthy as well. We're also gonna show you how you can easily maintain it and get the most out of your filter year in and year out. Now, if you're new to the channel, I own a company called Simply Ponds Limited. We've been around for over 16 years and we literally made the channel to share with you what we know to make your pond life a lot easier. We're also here to shut all the doom mongers up. Pond keeping is easy. So this video, it's not sponsored. We're also, we're not here to sell you anything. Um, so it's another reason why our channel is a little bit different than a lot of the other ones. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel really shows us um, some appreciation and gives us inspiration to make more videos like this. So hopefully, I don't bore you too much in this video about pond filters. They can be a little bit boring to talk about. I know there's lots of other people's videos out there jabbering on about mechanical filtration, biological filtration. I'm gonna try and keep it in layman's terms so it's easy for everyone to understand, especially if you're new to the pond keeping world. Um, it can be a little bit daunting, but it's actually, it's, it's pretty simple. With my business, we get called out to really bad ponds. That's, that's literally all, all we do. So every day we get called out to ponds that need a lot of help. Now, when you see some of the ponds that we've worked on, most people would naturally look at that pond and go, oh my God, no, nothing can survive in that. So just bear that in mind. So what we're gonna go through in the video is based on our experience and we show you the other side of pond keeping, the side that um, most people don't have the time for to look after a pond and it gets neglected, um, it gets blocked up, everything's just a mess, it's overgrown and everything else. The crazy thing is with these neglected ponds that we always come across, you'd naturally think that there's nothing living in there, but it's absolutely the opposite to what you think. It's crazy the amount of life that you find living in these ponds, fish, newts, frogs, just bugs, all sorts of pond life. It's absolutely mental how everything just looks after itself without anyone doing anything or even being fed. So, so why, why is that? I mean, how can that be? Um, you know, you've got to be asking yourself that question. If it's not been looked after, how on earth is everything alive and flourishing? It's no coincidence that ponds have been neglected um, and have been left to their own devices are the ones that tend to do the best. Here's an example, just put my money where my mouth is. This pond you're looking at now, it's, it's been neglected for about two and a half years. The customers couldn't actually uh, maintain it themselves, but they wanted to give it another go. Um, so they called us in, we had to clean it out, drain it out, and they didn't even know what was in there. So there's been no filters on here. I mean, look at the state of it, it, it looks pretty bad. Um, but then when we get down to the bottom, this is what we always find, it's just full of fish. As you can see, there's hundreds of fish living in this pond, living in all the green scum, algae, silt and debris. Most people will look at it and think that's bad for the fish. So how is that possible? So to cut a long story short, the debris and rubbish and everything else in the, in the pond is, is basically full of bacteria, um, healthy bacteria or beneficial bacteria that break down waste and other debris into nutrients. The nutrients are what the plants absorb and use up. So all the rubbish and everything else in the pond is actually creating a natural ecosystem where nature just takes over and everything looks after itself. I'm not suggesting now that every pond should be like that and green and horrible to look at. So all I'm trying to outline is that with all the dirt and everything in the bottom, it's providing a safe haven for all the fish and other animals to live. So it's a good thing to have dirt and rubbish in the water, but obviously it's not gonna be great for water clarity. So how can we fix that? So ideally, you really want the best of both worlds. So you really want lots of dirt and everything else, but all of that dirt in a filter, 
where the filter keeps it out of the pond and then obviously the pond stays clear. On the other side of it, we get quite a lot of comments where people go, well, you can't have dirt in a filter because of all the parasites and the parasites live in the dirt. And um, obviously the parasites can you know, upset your fish or kill them or whatever, but not suggesting that there wouldn't be any parasites in there. But the, the difference is a pond should have parasites. It's natural to have parasites because in a pond where there's a healthy environment, the fish will build up a natural immunity and if a parasite comes along, it, it won't turn into an infestation and it won't actually harm them. If it was bad to have parasites in a pond, the ponds which are all neglected and dirty, all the fish should be dead and there'd be problems after problems. You probably wouldn't even have, be able to keep fish in there. So it isn't true. I know it might, you might think, oh, keep it clean, get rid of the parasites, but it's the opposite. A filter system, basically, it's useless absolutely useless no matter how much money you spend on it or how big it is it's absolutely useless biologically without any of the sort of dirt and debris that gathers up in the filter to say and what we would like to do is to try and change the terminology so it's not filter cleaning because when you say clean everyone's like yeah you know I've got to, I've got to clean it I've got to get all the dirt out blah 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 uh, it's clean look look how clean it is you know, it's going to work better now so really it should be filter um, blocking that's the difference so when your filter gets blocked then it's time to clean it if it's not blocked up and it's been like a month or two, just leave it. You don't need to clean it. Promise you, I know you might be thinking, oh no, this doesn't sound right, I don't want to do that, but I promise you, the longer you leave your filter for without cleaning it, the better it is. Here's a few ways to sort of know if you've got the right filter or is everything working properly. So say for instance, you've bought a new filter, um, but it blocks up quite quickly. So basically, probably means that either the filter is too small and it just can't cope with the amount of rubbish that's going into the filter um, or well, a lot of the time this is what happens someone will buy the right size filter for the pond but there's just so much dirt in the pond it just can't cope with it so that's quite common we get loads of calls out to jobs like that where they've bought new equipment but it's not really working it's not the equipment's fault it's the fact that you know there's like six foot of silt in the bottom and the pump every time you switch it on it just is just chucking it straight into the filter so a lot of the time if you have a lot of dirt in the pond buy the filter for the the pond make sure it's the right size but then it's probably a good idea to have it cleaned out if you can have the pond cleaned out get rid of all the rubbish that you don't want keep all the plants keep all the fish treat the water make sure it's all dechlorinated when it goes back in and then when it comes to maintaining the filter be a lot easier to do so you'll be able to do it once every month or every two months um, just a little backwash every now and then and that every every time the dirt falls to the bottom of the pond goes into the filter clean out your filter technically or unblock it should I say um, and then technically the, the pond should be a lot clearer especially on the bottom where the pump is the other thing it might not be a case where you've got too much rubbish in the pond uh, the filter might be the right size and uh, there might not be that much dirt in the pond Maybe you've got too many fish, but a lot of the time people overfeed them. Fish will eat a lot of the food, but it all goes into the filter, and it's sometimes just too much for the filter to handle, um, and it can't actually filter out all that rubbish. So come the winter time, like like now, you know we've got customers where we maintain um, through the winter time, through the summer, and um, in the winter you don't really need to do much to a filter, to be honest, because everything's slowed down. You're not feeding that much. Um, the sun's not as strong, so there's not much algae going into the filter as well. Winter time, you may only need to like, unblock it once, once every sort of two or three months in the winter, maybe not even that.
how can you have a filter that's easy to clean and doesn't always block up? So obviously, if you can afford to, get the biggest filter you can, because the bigger it is, obviously the more dirt and everything else it can handle. So if you're unsure of what size filter you need, we did do a video, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can have a little look at that and that tells you exactly how to match it up. But cut a long story short, um, we always double up on, say if you have a 5,000 gallon pond, when you go to the shop to buy a filter, ensure you double up the size so you go for a 10,000 gallon filter as a minimum. You know what size filter you want to have and you're going to go and buy one. So buy a filter that has a waste drain. Can't recommend how much easier it is to clean or unblock, shall we say, if you have a waste drain built into the filter system. So the benefits of having the waste valve on the filter box is you clean everything in the filter. So you don't have to take anything out. So even if you've got sponges or whatever, or brushes, you literally swish everything around in the water, in the filter. Or so obviously switch off the pump first, give everything a little swish around, stir everything up, and then open up the waste drain and you'll just watch all the rubbish go out. And the nice thing about that is you're washing it with the pond water, which is what you should do, never use tap water. And then every single time you do it, you're not really like completely cleaning it. You're just giving a nice backwash to unblock everything, which doesn't take long. And then once it's all empty, shut your valve, switch on your pump, off you go. It's that easy. So that's the good thing. If you can get your filter system set up properly, waste drain is a lot easier to maintain and manage. You'll find you'll enjoy your pond more because obviously everything is now biologically working better. The water's always good. It's always going to be nice and clear. When it comes to backwash, it doesn't take you that long. You do it in seconds. You'll get yourself a nice little routine going. Then after a while, you know, you, you just sit back and you'll be enjoying your pond year in and year out. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, you know what to do. Click on the like button and subscribe if you want to see some more. Show some appreciation and we'll make you some more videos. Thank you for watching.